This conference will now be recorded. I'd like to call the May 18th, 2020 City Council Special Meeting Order at 7 p.m. Are there any additions to the agenda tonight or corrections? If, if there's no additions or corrections, I would ask for a motion to approve the agenda tonight. This is Councilor McNair. I'll move that we accept the agenda as written. Is there a second? Councilor Webb was second. Would you like to take the roll call on that uh, motion, please, Stephanie? Yes. Councillor Webb? Aye. Councillor Wagner? Aye. Councillor McNair? Aye. Councillor Allen? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Stephanie. The first uh, old business item is Vernonia Lake potential COVID-19 changes. Do you want me to I speak can... to that, Mayor? Yes, Let's would you uh, go ahead, uh, Josette. So um, as of the 15th, we moved into phase one, um, which kind of allows a range of different openings. Um, we have secured cleaning supplies for um, the restrooms to be cleaned. And so there's the potential that staff would recommend that we open the lake back to fishing in some capacity um, and also open the lake restroom for the regular business hours it would get locked up at nine o'clock at night but then open back up in the morning so to what extent council wants to open that whether it's bank fishing only bank and boating no docks it, that's kind of up to you guys to tell staff what you're wanting to do, or if you still feel that there's concern enough to keep it um, closed, we'd wanna know that also. So City Hall um, won't be opening back up until we get to phase two. Um, we still haven't received our hand sanitizer um, stands and the product for that yet. Um, and we just today got our plexiglass kind of shield for the receptionist areas and that's not put up yet either so most of the other municipal buildings class and i st helens are not opening the city halls until phase two and i understand that is uh 21 days so will that be the fourth or fifth of june when that opens back yeah when if everything goes right we're able to enter phase two is that about the 5th of, of june joe's at that's what she's proposing but it will really be whether or not she um does an executive order to go into phase two at that time really depends on the numbers okay well i uh, Getting back to the lake and the fishing, I I got a call from Susie on Saturday morning, and she was pretty upset. And she was talking about people um, uh, the day prior on Friday. I guess a gentleman from Astoria uh, completely. Um, uh, ignored the no fishing and and um, I, I think there was uh, I think Abby was called in on that and they talked with him and anyway ended up leaving 
Vernonia with a string or a fish. And, but when she called on on Saturday morning, there was another individual from Clackamas and giving her a hard time. And and she asked me if I'd talk to him. So I talked to him and tried to reason with him, but it was, I didn't get very far on it. But um, anyway, she's, at least over the weekend, it, it's quite stressful for her. And uh, I'm just concerned. My concern is losing her as a park host. Um, so uh, I just want to. Yeah, go ahead, Councilor. This is Councilman McNair. Did she contact her supervisor? No, she did not. Well, that's the proper avenue for her to do this thing. Um, so the question before us right now is whether we're going to open up the lake or not to fishing. Right. Mm -hmm. But she she tried to call the police and she couldn't she couldn't get anyone. I I don't know what happened on Friday. Uh, Chief Connor might be able to address that on what happened on Friday. But on Saturday morning she couldn't get a hold of any anybody, so she called me. Yeah, I understand. Um, Steve, do you want to say what you know? Well, as far as the Saturday call is concerned, there were no, I worked Saturday morning and there were no calls pending for the lake. Um, there was a call into Oregon State Police Saturday morning, which I spoke to a senior trooper who had spoken with, with Susan. Um, and they, uh, determined that without a city ordinance, there's nothing we can do and the state would not enforce it. Um, but I didn't get any calls directly. I'm not sure if maybe she tried to call into the office and nobody was there. The Friday incident was handled by Abby. I don't have 100% of the details, but yeah, the gentleman did leave with a stringer of fish and um, without the enforcement ordinance established to for us to to be able to issue citations for no fishing, all we can do is essentially base it on a, a temporary park rule and trespass people in violation. Did you, this is Councillor McNair again. Mayor? Go ahead, Bruce. Um, Chief, can you hear me? Yeah. Did you trespass him? Um, I'm not sure if Abby trespassed on that day. I've trespassed several that, that have been fishing down there um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, but we haven't had a, a ton of complaints in reference to it other than stuff getting posted on social media. Well, this is Councilor McNair again. I think I'd like to take things in order the question before us is whether or not we intend to reopen the lake and to what degree we intend to do so. Um, it sounds like we have three options. Um, uh, opening from the bank and then an opening by the bank and the banks, fishing from the banks and by boat. And the third option would be a full opening. Does anybody have, and my, my view is, is that, uh, my only concern would be the, the docks. I, I'd probably like to seek some other individuals that, uh, maybe have, have been watching the prior to the fishing there that was going on. If they felt that they were following the six, six foot, uh, whatever, um spacing that would be my my concern would be the docks i'm i'm finished all right mayor this is councillor allen can i chime in here 
You sure can, Pastor Allen. I would tend to, I think, agree with the lines that I think Mr. McNair, Councillor McNair, is going down. Um, uh, I think the docks is probably one thing we could block off and keep some of the hand touching uh, contamination, cross contamination, away from our our citizens to potential, you know, anybody contacting back and forth. So I would probably tend to lean toward closing off the blocks with a sheet of plywood and. And I had asked that the city administrator would post those COVID signs right on those sheets of plywood that I give her. Okay. That's, that's about all I have to say on it. This is Councilor Webb. Go ahead. Yeah. So, Chief, uh, so the docks would be easier for us to uh, legally enforce. Um, yeah, yeah, closing the docks off would not be an issue at all. Okay. But uh, the current the current situation is pretty awkward for our officers. Uh, we're not really tied to a direct ordinance right at the current time. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so. Uh, the ordinance you know, there, really, you know, Dale, the ordinance really just allows us to find somebody. And so if we were to close the lake in the future, it would be in wanting to really have people have a consequence, then that's why you'd need an ordinance is to address those fines basically, right, Chief? Yes. You can't cite someone without a without it being against the ordinance. Yes. Well, we have um is a counselor McNair, if I might interject. Mayor. Go ahead, Councilor. Yeah, go ahead. So I think where Councilor Webb's coming from in terms of uh, from the enforcement aspect, obviously you don't have an enforcement ability. If that, if nothing else, that's showing us uh, Friday that we didn't have that. Um, I guess you could trespass them, but uh, how do you trespass somebody off the property when the property is open to others? What do you uh, we're, we're trespassing based upon the fact that they violated a park rule that was established by okay. city council. So just like anything, any, uh, any of the other parks say they, they violate a noise ordinance too many times, we'll remove them from the park. Well, that's what that, thanks for the answer there, chief. Uh, I was, that was the part that I was concerned about is that, uh, if we're going to go about this, you know, we need to be comprehensive about it, um, in the future. I agree. Dale, if you, uh, uh, Mayor, I'm finished right here. If you... Thank you, Councilor, for your input. Any other council members would like to offer any input on this? This is Councilor Wagner. I yes, agree the doc. I'm sorry, what? Uh, go ahead, Susan. Thank you. Um, yeah. I, I agree that the docks should be shut. That is such a touch point um, that there's, and there is other opportunity to fish without being on the dock uh, by using the, the banks. Um, how does staff feel about the bathrooms? Are they comfortable with that? And are we able to further discuss what occurred on Friday and Saturday at this meeting? Is it related to the Vernonia Lake? Yes. Yes. If it would have some bearing on potential changes, then yes. Okay. Um, so uh, again, I reiter reiterate my question, how does staff feel about the bathrooms being open and having to address cleaning them? 
And are you meaning the park host? Is because if that is because the they're sole, not staff. If that is the sole person who is responsible for cleaning the bathroom, then yes. If it is park staff as well, if it is parks department staff as well as the park host then it would be both the contracting person and the employees. Right, so um, we have the necessary PPE for staff or the park host to be fully outfitted and the needed cleaning supplies um, to do periodic throughout the day, wipe down, and then full clean um, at the end of the day. Um, for the next, before the next morning when it's opened back up again. Um, we have not, we didn't really put it in the hands of the park host, whether or not they want to do it because it's part of their agreement anyway. And if we feel like they're fully outfitted in protective equipment, that that shouldn't be a problem. Um, if there needs to be backup, we have public work staff that is already cleaning like here at the city hall front restrooms and doing cleaning like that um, for disinfecting in other areas in the city. So, and then Anderson Park's still being cleaned by those park hosts. Granted, they're not open to the public the same way, so they have a little bit less um, use. But um, potentially what staff would be wanting to do is opening the day use areas However, council is going to do the fishing, but also open the day use area of Airport Park um, or Nehalem River Campground, sorry, for day use. The playgrounds still remain closed under the governor's orders. So playgrounds still have to be cordoned off according to the executive order, but that walking, biking, boating, and fishing to whatever capacity you guys are going to allow would be open as of whatever date you guys say that needs to happen. So staff's fully ready to clean the restrooms. The park host, I believe, also will be if if that's what we decide. As a so follow-up question to that. It sounds like there's going to be additional work time associated with cleaning the bathrooms. It's not the normal um, scope of her job description or the park host park description or job description to clean the bathroom X number of times a day. So this is excess. Has that been taken into consideration? Yeah, so that's what, what I mean by the the big clean would be could be potentially done both at the beginning and end of the day by public works, if that's what we need to do. And then hers would be more of like a wiping down, disinfecting handles and knobs and stuff like that. So not as strenuous, but more often basically. And we have talked to her about that because we're in the midst of it. So she knows at some point that will be um, how she would be doing that often, basically. I just want to make sure that we are not holding her to an expectation of doing things um, that we should potentially be providing a greater stipend for, or however um, we would do that because I mean to me if we're expecting somebody under normal circumstances you clean end of day and middle of day or you know once a day and now you're expecting someone to be cleaning every hour uh, or wiping down every hour I, I just want to make sure that we're taking that into consideration yeah so whatever is above and beyond counselor we would public works can fill that void it would not be troublesome to say, okay, at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, you're the wipe down person at the, at the lake and another person have a 11 and a 1 o'clock, right? And then keep the park host at what their agreement, because we did sign an agreement, says. So right. however that works out, staff would work through that with her and then cover the shortfalls, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I was just wondering if that's the best use of um, dollars, if if it makes more sense to, again, increase her, her 
contract a small amount of money to do it or whether it makes more sense to just have parts. But that's not our job. That's your job. So just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Yeah. So just for councils, can I say one thing? Just for councils information, um, camping also became one of the things that local governments could, um, we were free to do with phase one. And staff's proposing if we can get our ducks in a row with everything handled that camping would start to be allowed at Nehalem River Park Anderson Park and Primitive at the lake starting June 1st. So keep in mind that as long as the phases keep going one, two, three, and we're opening, we're going to slowly ramp up with those opportunities unless we get pulled back into something short of phase one. We're kind of moving with the other agencies in our county um, and preparing to kind of slowly open different avenues of um, recreation. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry about that, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, what ramifications does the judge that just declared Governor Brown's <laughs> extension of executive order unconstitutional? So I sent that out, um, being that that was that I haven't seen it, and our lawyers haven't seen it. Um, I don't know what what the ramifications of are that are of that counselor. So I'd I'd probably know tomorrow whether or not to take that seriously or whether or not to that it's just going to go back into appeal and until there's some final decision, everything stands. So well, our uh, lawyer is looking at it, but I'm not sure what's going to be the outcome of that. So we're slowly Mayor. just doing what we can do. And Mayor. moving forward with opening. Mayor, yeah, this councilman. Mc, Mc, go ahead. Yeah, they asked for a stay on that order, and they and he didn't grant it. So, as of right now, it's in effect. They'll have to go to the uh, next level of court to to get that stay, and that won't occur until they do that. So, but is it his, only his for order, that county? His but order is, it is in effect. That... It's statewide. But he's a county judge. He still had to, he still had authority to do uh to I don't know I don't know that they do. That's that's our concern. So that's why we're not following that because it seems like it could be on and then off again. So we're just moving forward with what's allowed currently under the state. Well, I I don't disagree with your your conclusions there that but it's still the stay is effective. I mean, there is no stay. His order is effective. So you're saying it's county, just the county. I don't think it's related to just county. But well, I don't um, know where his authority spreads over is what I'm saying, Bruce. I don't know with his I, I, position I as a county. Yeah, okay. I understand your, your yeah. Okay. Anyway. Well, I, I, just, I just checked my email. This is Mayor Holbert. I just checked my email. Oh, about five o'clock tonight, uh, Josette, and I hadn't seen anything yet from League of Cities or or uh, or uh, the governor's office on that yet, quite. So um, we might know something more tomorrow. That's what I'm hoping. At least get an opinion from our legal yeah. on do sure. we go with that or do we? Is it safer for us to just slowly? open what we know we can and, and in case it's pulled back or something. Yeah. yeah. And getting back getting back to your um your statement about uh the June first uh yes. reopening of our of our parks. Um you just wanted us to keep that in mind and then uh will you present that to us if, if it is a reopening um, in our June 1st council meeting? Yeah, so most likely, um, as long as the numbers keep going where they're going and there's no legal thing coming up, that staff's plan is to be fully ready and outfitted to 
start allowing camping Monday, June 1st. And that is just an airport, or is that in all our all our parks? No, that'd be uh, Nehalem River, Anderson, and Primitive at the lake. Okay. All the all the camping facilities. Yeah. Sure. So is we're just making sure um, that the. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish your statement. I'd like to be next. Well, that's just making sure that all of the restrooms and the park hosts are outfitted with everything they would need. That gives us enough time. We have an order. We're hoping we're on two different lists to get all the supplies, um, and we're hoping that our next supply is coming in at the end of this week, and then we'll know for sure if we'll be ready to kind of um, have them prepared for that opening. Mayor. Uh, with no objection, I'd like to I'd like to follow C Councilman Wagner if no one else is. Okay, go ahead, Susan. Thank you. Um, I would like to make sure that we include at your own risk. There's some language I've seen um, Disney put out. Um, sorry for the reference, but they are really good at this. They've put some language out that says. You know, COVID-19, this is your risk by attending here, and you are coming here at your own risk. Because, and I know that, that you can't negate someone's right to sue, but I certainly, certainly believe that we need to be proactive about protecting the city as best we can. Yeah, so that's also something that I'm talking to legal about, is exactly what wording to use, because... Um, some of the con my counterparts in other communities are saying not to say that type of thing, and some are saying we must say that type of thing. So I'm trying to get clarification on that. But that's kind of why we put it out to June 1st is to give ourselves time to pencil all this out and get it done right. There's some that are nervous about saying that because then you're potentially calling someone to say that they got it there and that you're responsible or something, if that makes sense. So that's why I'm trying to figure it out. But I get what you're saying, Susan, I'm on it. Thank you. Okay, Councilor McNair. Um, thank you, Count, uh, Mayor Hobart. Um, what, I, what I would like to return to is the original reason that uh, that drove us to the closing of the lake to begin with. And I don't do this as a means of trying to sway anybody away from voting to open. I just, the aspect of it, I don't want it to be forgotten. Um, I don't think we closed the lake, the fishing, so much as that it, we were worried about the proximity, closeness of people during the uh, in the act of uh, the recreation act of fishing, it was drawing people to the community and overrunning the community at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, when it, we felt there was a high threat, I just wonder, I just was like, uh, if that is worthy of some discussion right now today as to whether we pass that point. This is Councilor Wagner. Okay. I'm not certain we really have a choice in the matter. Um, I, I hear what Councilman McNair is saying, and I do not disagree. But I also believe that um, particularly what we've already seen has indicated that we aren't going to stop people from coming. We don't have to blast through the internet that we are open, although other people will do that for us, I'm sure. They're gonna come no matter what. And I think the best thing to do at this point is to control as best we can what our response is to that. Councilor McNair, I'd, I'd like, this is Mayor Hobart, I'd like to react to your, your statement just a minute ago. I, 
uh, we saw a big concern uh, specifically around the spring break weekend with a big influx of people down on the coast and and, and even here at the at the Vernonia Lake um, and I I feel really good about the the decision the council made um, as to uh, close off the fishing because it really wasn't about fishing to me it was about numbers and I think once we did that um, uh, it, it really worked and, and um, I, the numbers were decreased um, and we've done this now for a month and um, I've been watching the numbers in our county and they they've held very low for quite a while i think there we're up to 16 right now and uh, i i think a good majority of those positives have recovered and so um i personally think that um, we accomplished what we wanted to do and but i i think um and i don't feel at all bad about the decision we made um, I think we had a good support from the community in doing so, I feel. And um, I think it's it's time to, we're going to have to open it up sometime. So I, I think with the uh, approval of phase one within our county, uh, starting last Friday the 15th, I think it's time to open up the fishing. And I, I think closing off the docks is a great idea and um opening up the restrooms that'll that'll uh take care of the health issue i, I think substantially and and uh so um that's my take on it councillor well, i appreciate that mayor i appreciate councillor wagner's um councillor webb or alan if you guys have something to, to add to that <clears throat> This is Councilor Allen. I'd like to follow up on Bruce's statement. Uh, I also, numbers are still concerning me, but originally it was not washing that was really concerning me because I think that's a very important way to fight this is to be able to wash your hands and decontaminate after touching something if you're not wearing gloves or that kind of thing. So. With the with the restrooms open, I think uh, that helps a lot. But um, crowds still do concern me somewhat. Uh, I was at uh, Fred Meyer in Beaverton the other day. I walked in there, and there must have been 10 million people in there. I turned around, and walked out. They weren't doing anything. Seemed like socially distancing at all. So, not sure how they get away with that, but. But uh, as long as we can keep a decent, clean facility, um, seems like we have a lot of staff in the city that's not working right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're furloughed. If they're not furloughed, maybe they could all take a turn cleaning that down there. So like Councillor Wagner said, it's not all on a camp host responsibility. So we're, we're fully working except for the library. Are they getting paid? All of paid? our staff is working. Yeah, they're working and getting paid. No, I mean the library. Oh, library has, so um, the state law allows for 80 hours um, that you're not able to work if you're in with the public, that the city pays your normal wage. And then following that, you can either um, do two thirds of your pay and it acts as sick time for up to 10 weeks. So they're very close to their normal salaries right now, even with the limited hours. But in phase one, the library is planning on going back to more hours. They're going to have one day where they're um, open to appointments for people that are um, concerned or immune suppressed or have issues. And then they're going to have two days a week where um, they're back to shortened hours, but they're normal days for the public with social distancing. We have plexiglass up, and then we do have enhanced cleaning at the library following that opening. 
So we're pretty much up and running everywhere as far as staff. But Joseph, may I ask what products you're missing that you're hoping to get by the end of the week? Really what we're missing for City Hall um, is the hand sanitizer. We bought some of those pedestal units and we're just waiting for them to show up um, so that we can have that available for people coming into City Hall. And the library is pretty much outfitted. They have the masks, they have um, cleaners and disinfectant wipes, and we did install plexiglass around the checkout counter for the library librarians and then they're going to be able to wipe off the computers in between patrons and stuff so we're pretty good we're just waiting for our normal uh delivery this week for to make sure that june 1st we'll just be on a rotation to get normal products and won't have a hiccup in the delivery but anything anyone can bring we'd love it <laughs> Yeah, let me know if you have problems with the hand sanitizer. I could probably source some of that. Okay. I can get it by the gallon or the refills for the pump thing. So I have quite a bit of that, I think. So. Okay. I'll check with Andrew what type it is and what we're planning on using and send you a text. Perfect. Thank you. This is Councillor Webb. Go ahead, Councillor Webb. Um, so in regards to the docks, what criteria are we going to use to when we think we can open? I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around that as to you know what what level are we expecting to see? You know, again, I expressed in the previous meeting, you know, it's still personal responsibility for people to take care of themselves, bring their own hand sanitizers or wipes. You know that. It, uh, when I, I noticed before, they were pretty well spacing on the docks, you know, the infraction. It wasn't like they were packed on there. They were pretty well spaced. But I, I know it's an additional contact point, um, but is it really much more of a contact point? I guess we're not cleaning it, although it is out in the sun and in the elements, which is actually a cleaning agent. Um Versus our restrooms, you know, a doorknob. I mean, yeah, we might be sanitizing every couple hours, but uh, I'm just curious on that. And then the other aspect uh, of this is uh, if we're going to reopen it, uh, we need to have an orderly reopening. Um, we need to do, you know, have staff have time to go down and pull the boat launch barricade and the signs and and be prepped for this. Yeah, I agree with not tomorrow, or at least giving us tomorrow to get all that stuff done and get her outfitted with the supplies and the schedule made and the plywood up if you're keeping the docks closed and everything. We need probably, since this is happening at seven o'clock at night, we'd need at least the day tomorrow to do that if you're wanting to kind of be pretty immediate with the opening okay so then you know we could do like effective as of you know midnight tomorrow <laughs> and uh something like that but what about this discussion on the docks uh, anybody else got any input on that i mean I, i'm trying to think uh you know, when are we going to be comfortable with reopening those? Um, I, I'm not sure that we could just open them myself. Uh, this is Councilman McNair. Go ahead, Councilor. Um, I think that uh, you basically, to some degree, made the case yourself, Councilman Webb. Um, for me, those areas, like you said, they uh, probably the out in the open elements, sunshine, and but this is also May, and we're not getting all that much sunshine right at the moment, um, and we're not expected till to this weekend. Uh, but for the most part, limiting, excluding the docks. 
goes back to the main reason that we attempted to do the closure in the first place, and that was to, uh, I might be so bold as to save lives, even possibly yours. You know, so if 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 there continues to be the the success that we're having in in the community and in the the county that we've had in the in the recent past in the last month, I could see a point where we would be doing it fairly soon. Um, if, if we chose not to do it tonight, but, you know, we don't know that, uh, this, this initial phase opening might end up being, uh, might initiate a spike, um, as they move, as people move, especially as people move out of the, uh, uh the inner count, the tri-county area where they, they have an issue there, um, They've substantially larger than what we do. Um, we've been lucky so far, so I would be hesitant to just jump into opening the docks up right away. This is Councillor Webb again. Uh, Go ahead. So I, I agree. If we're if we're going to close the docks, it needs to be something more permanent. The chief can clue us into how many times he's had to retape the docks, how many times I've retied the tapes, how many times Susie's retied the tapes. It's it it's a, you know we got to understand when we put a restriction out there, it's going to be an enforcement issue, and then there it is again another stress for Susie to have to or our camp host have to deal with. And, uh, you know, so there's that aspect of it, having law enforcement have to deal with. Um, I don't totally disagree with the arguments, but I, I'd kind of like to, you know, I mean, if we go into phase two, uh, then I think it may, or, or we could even decide that if we go into phase two, uh, that it opens up. Once we get into, uh, June and warmer weather. Summer months, yeah. Fishing's going to drop off anyhow. Plus, we'll be getting some sterilization from the sun. So, but rain does right. a good job. Too, so. Yeah, I just wanted to be a little bit out front on that because I, I know, I know. Again, it's going to be an issue. Uh, uh, it already has been. In fact, I think Chief can tell us that's where some of his trespasses have been already. So. Count, this is Councilman McNair again. Go ahead. Um, if the chief, I'd like to ask him a question, and Councilman Webb, what we're talking about is putting up a more permanent barrier, or, or it, was it just was it plywood prior to this? You guys are more knowledgeable about this than I, have. I, I haven't been tape. down there. It was just tape. Yeah. And there so was if you a, put up a, there was a sign on it, but yeah, if there's something more permanent there that can't be just walked through, it's going to be a, a little more easy. And and it, and they're going to be probably a little bit more visible doing so. Um, yeah. And and then that again gives you the ability to be able to uh, to enforcement enforce it. Well, one of the things that I would ask of of staff of. Uh, our city administrator is maybe if we do have people that are that are available and I don't know your your what the um condition is there with people that are not that are not uh working but are being paid at the moment and our police department if maybe they could have a more active uh um presence down there just in general, to to go through, maybe take a walk around the lake, um, and uh, when when it when it's uh, busy, and remind people that uh, they need to maintain their spacing, and that uh, we hope they all enjoy themselves, but we don't want anybody getting sick from it. So, um, I don't know if that's asking more than probably. 
you're capable of doing, but uh, I'd sure be happy if I saw something in that or along that order. This is Mayor Hobart. Um, I think there's been some good discussion, and and, and before it began, I I kind of I kind of really like the idea about closing off the the docks, but as the discussion continued with several different people, I kind of got to looking at it a little differently as to I know there's fishing over the brow, and then there's certain areas that um, we've uh, made it easier to access the lake um, uh, without use of the docks. And and, and then I, I thought of, well, if we, if we take that 50 feet of space across each dock, that, that eliminate some of the fishing space will will that cause a uh, a greater amount of people fishing at those little um paths down to the lake and on the other side and uh i'm just wondering and then having the restriction um uh, like councillor webb said and something more to enforce um I got to thinking about, well, we opened up the restrooms, um, so we pretty well solved the health issue. Um, they have a place to wash their hands and and use the, uh, the restroom facilities. And I thought, well, what's wrong with opening up the docks and, and uh, trusting that they uh, do practice their six foot social distancing and, and leave it up to them. It's Mr. Mayor, more thoughts I... that. Sure. May... This is Council Wagner, may I speak? Yes. There is a significant difference between going to the restroom, touching a handle, washing your hands and leaving a restroom than there is walking down the dock, holding on to the side, to the railing because you're holding a bucket and your fishing pole and whatever else, spending how much time on that dock, you're probably gonna get hungry, you're probably gonna wanna eat, you're not gonna run back to the restroom to wash your hands in order to have something to eat or drink, et cetera. So I think that these are two completely separate issues and I, I still firmly believe that we do not open up the docks at this time. Okay. Well, we can sure we can sure talk about it some more. Anybody else have any other discussion about it? Would anyone like to make a motion? Council, I'll just Councilor McNair, um, Mayor. Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, just to move things along, I'll make a motion that we open up fishing to the public on uh, uh, Vernonia Lake, excluding the dock areas. Okay. Do you have a date? Uh, Wednesday. At 12.01 a.m.? Yeah. Whatever Tuesday twelve oh one a.m. Yeah, Wednesday twelve oh one a.m. Okay. Um, this is Councillor Wagner. I'd be happy to second that, but does that mean somebody is going to show up at twelve oh one a.m. on Wednesday morning? Maybe. Well, I guess you can't. Can you legally fish in the dark, Councillor Webb? Yes. Yep. You won't. I mean. Yeah. That's the difference. You're going to be ready or you're not. We have a park rule. Yeah. Don't leave it. yeah, I guess the park isn't open until daylight. Oh, well, there you the go. Park hours. So, you want to say daylight? Then we can say daylight. 
Okay. A half an hour before da, da, uh, dawn. Okay. He amended his motion. I still Is there a second? So you're going to second it, Susan? Councillor Wagner, seconding the motion. Okay, you want to take roll call, Stephanie, please? Yes. Councillor McNair? Aye. Councillor Allen? Aye. Mayor Hobart? Aye. Councillor Wagner? Aye. Councillor Webb? Aye. Motion carried. Oh, come on, Dale. Geez. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> you know, there's something immoral about abandoning your judgment. You're supposed to stick okay. together. Um, yeah, uh, Mayor Hobart? Yes. Yeah. Councilor McNair again? Yeah, go ahead, Bruce. I think this would be a good opportunity to, uh, if if the council, the rest of the council agrees, to have a discussion about the issue that uh, you were presented um, by the park host. Um, maybe if they want to speak to it, I thought uh, Councillor Wagner spoke about that, and uh, um, I know I have. A, a few concerns, and I believe my fellow councilman, my friend and fellow councilman, Councilman Webb does. Okay. So you want some future discussion about this? If the rest of the council wants to, if they don't, then that's fine too. For phase two, or what are we talking? I'm not following. Well, when you would open the dock? No. Oh. It was about the issues of uh, how we went about enacting this, uh, our closure of the, of the, um, the lake initially. And if oh, okay. maybe we might have, uh, we might have, take a different route or maybe been a little bit more um, comprehensive about it. This is Councillor Wagner. Um, I would rather have this, that particular subject um, as part of a either workshop or a in face or face to face meeting because I think there's a lot of intricacies here and we're we're done with that at the moment. I thought that we were going to be discussing what occurred with the park host and the process re related to that and her how how the park host is able to access people as her backup when there's an issue. Mm -hmm. This is Councillor Allen. Mayor Hobart, can I Hi, jump in on this? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Josette, just so you know, I am getting citizens that say we can't get a hold of anybody. We call the police. We call City Hall. We leave messages. Nobody returns our call day after day after day. So I just want you to know that's what they're saying. And one of these citizens okay. called ODFW, and they told them that fishing was open as far as they were concerned. And I don't know if that's true or not. Well, I don't. Um, one of the issues is, is I really have no control over what button someone pushes to what mailbox they get at someone's desk who may or may not be at their desk when that phone call comes in. We don't all we don't answer each other's phone calls. I did have one gentleman who I believe is on the line that I didn't get back to, but I did speak to him today when he called again about another issue and fishing. And I, I did not, had not gotten back to him, but that was the only one that's called me about fishing on my phone. 
Um, and I've been talking to ODFNW, to Michael Sonat about it, and um, that that has not been the case of what they've said. They've gotten a lot of calls at ODFNW, and he said that he's until you guys make a decision, he's going to continue to tell them it's closed. So I don't know who they're calling at ODFNW. Who is who is Michael Sonat, uh, the individual he's, that you? He's one of the gentlemen that works in the wa our region watershed with Robert Bradley. So okay, he came and works on the lake pump and just there's a few of the representatives that we work with for our region. Robert being one of them, Michael being another one, and Michael's the one of the schedulers for the trout stocking. So I work with those guys. I don't know who they're calling at ODF and W that's telling them it's not closed. They would have to have. I would have to know a name in order to kind of chase that down of the person they are talking to. <clears throat> so I don't know, you know, who it is. I I get a lot of calls on my phone that are just hang ups. They never leave me a message. Um, so it could be that where they get the message that, that I'm not available at this time and they just get frustrated and hang up. But I've only had one gentleman who I believe is on here, Mr. Achondo, and I think he's he's the only one I that left me a message that I didn't get back to. But then I talked to him today. So I don't know how to solve the problem. If they don't leave us a message, we don't go through and call our caller ID list. So maybe that would be something to tell them. Leave your name and number and the date and time, and then if if they can if we're really not answering them and they've done that, then we have a problem, but they're not leaving those that information for me. So this is Councillor Webb. Go ahead, Dale. So the issue with ODF and W and the, them not recognizing the fishing being closed is because it is not officially closed by ODF and W. There is actually a process to go through to get them to do a temporary closure. Um, uh, we didn't do that. Um, all we got was permission to close access to fishing, which really wasn't permission because we didn't need their permission to close access to fishing. So right, it, we did what Seaside did with the beaches. The fish are still ODF and W's fish floating in the lake. And I guess if you didn't have to touch park property, you could go fishing. We closed the access to the ability. Yeah, but when we had our meeting, that wasn't, I think, what That's we That's what agreed. I told you they said to do, that we they, they had no jurisdiction over the bank or the access. So... Uh, when we when we voted in our motion, it was to, clo to close the fishing if that was allowable by ODF and W. And, right, and it was. That's what they told us on the phone. The issue then is to actually close access. We're closing it just to fishermen, but we're leaving it open to everybody else. And that's a pretty tricky situation. Um, but that's what you guys decided to do. You left discussed. it open to walkers and bikers and everybody. We we that, discussed. We discussed. Um, you know, talking. We remember we had the discussion and we could close it from the pavement, the water, and I said I could still fish from the trail, and nobody said. You know, we were all like, "Well, we don't want to close the trail," and. Uh, so then we were like, well, if ODF and W will allow us to close fishing, the act of fishing, then we were we were going to go that route. But in all actuality, all we did was close the fishermen's access to the lake. So as it was a little miscommunication, I think between us all. This is Councilor Wagner. Yeah, can Go we ahead. move? Uh, this is all things that have been done in the past. Again, I would like to reiterate that I'd like to have this meeting in person. There are so many 
um, aspects to this of what was discussed and how we went about it. I don't think that it is fair to be having that conversation during a special meeting that is addressing one particular thing, which is, you know, the like and potential COVID-19 changes. We are past what has gone on in the past. We are moving forward with trying to decide whether to open or not. There has been a motion on the table that's been seconded and voted on. And I would really like to carry any further conversation into another meeting in person at a later date. This is Councilman McNair. Yeah, go ahead, Bruce. Uh, so noted, Councilman Wagner. Um, my my concern is is that uh, trying to understand under an emergency order which we declared, and I'd ask uh, our city administrators help in understanding this. Do we have special? Does does this allow special powers in the sense that uh, you can do certain things that you would normally not be able to do under under uh, normal aspects. That's the first part of my question, if you could answer that. Or do you, you know, I don't want to put you yeah. on the spot, Josette, but. Yeah, so you do have special powers. You can allocate resources specific ways. You can ask for funding. You can make determinations and possess things. If there was a stockpile of something the city needed, you could commandeer things. I mean, that's what it, yes, it gives you special powers to do things. Okay. Because it's so, the benefit of whatever the emergency is. Right. So if, if we go going forward, if we're not out of the, out of the, um, not through the rough seas yet, we're still in the midst of this. Um, Your order if we, in, yeah, if we, if we, well, I mean, I'm talking about the issue of the um, epidemic, the, the pandemic, or whatever you want to call it. Um, if we encounter this again, should we be more thorough in terms of going forward and, and enacting an ordinance that uh, would give the, the our law enforcement the ability to do their job and not put them in a bad situation? And then I mean, could we rescind that could we rescind that ordinance once we're past the the danger? I I would have to look into what the mechanism would be for that. that I that's, get that's the kind need of, to, I get the need to to have an ordinance for the purpose of citing someone. Mm -hmm. I don't know about just I don't Typically, ordinances aren't something you rescind 90 right. days later. Yeah, so I've I never encountered that, that either. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not looking to place, I'm not looking for blame or anything. We we did what we did because it was necessary. It fulfilled the, the what we needed to do at the time. We're, we're through that, or hopefully we're through that certain period. Um, I'm just looking that if, we're not completely out of the water yet, uh, and so it's it's a matter of uh, you know if we encounter this something of this in the near future that uh, maybe we go at it from a different aspect. Um, and I, I truly believe that staff and the council itself did the best that they could at the time. Um, so uh, I just was that was my goal in this. I understand Councilman Wagner's concerns. And I thank you for your uh, input and concern also, Councilor McNair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if nobody else has any other discussion on the uh, Renonia Lake, I'd like to move on to the city administrator report at this time. Okay, so part of um, what I was bring, going to bring to you guys was just the plan for that I've kind of reiterated already um, that we're working towards opening all camping avenues 
for recreation in the, the, the city owned properties uh, June 1st. Um, and then we're also working with the library to do also a June 1st opening of, um, she's still going to do the um, curbside service for people that are not interested in coming to the library. She's going to do one, the beginning of the week, first day of the week for appointment only for immune suppressed and people that are worried. And then she's just going to follow the social distancing rules for the other two to three days, depending on how the um, patrons need the service. Um, so Shannon's all prepared for that. Um, we're still moving forward with um, Rose Avenue project. Um, we're still slated to have most of the stuff done by the end of the month. We'll probably spill over a little bit into June with some finalizing testing of HVAC and stuff like that, and then um, be looking to get a certificate of occupancy. Um, the cemetery is doing a silent memorial service, so we're going to have notification that the cemetery is ready for Memorial Day, and then a PDF where people can read through it and participate in their own individual silent service by printing out or taking their phone up there and doing it, or we will have copies up there um, of the silent ser service that's being done by the committee members. Uh, staff's been all lined up and got it all weed whacked and mowed, and they're looking to put up um, just the first run of the American flags by the monument and then the service branches of service flags um, ahead of the lions coming up. Um, on Thursday and putting in the veteran uh, crosses and flags. Um, where we, June 1st, the Jamboree Committee has a meeting to talk about potentially doing some virtual events that people can stream on Facebook. And then they are also talking about um, the potential for um, neighborhood type parades to have different sections of that participate in the parade go through the neighborhood. So like uh, horseback people would probably um, be with classic cars going through kind of the flatter areas of town and then maybe having some different groups that wanna go through the east and west sides of town. So they're gonna be proposing all of that on the first to present to you guys at your June 15th meeting um, is this as it stands now, we probably still will not be able, they won't be able to host any sort of um, softball events. So um, that's kind of where they're going with that. We did, however, talk to Intercultural Society. They're not going to be hosting the 4th of July event like that draws people down to the park. But we did, Chief did sign um, the fireworks permit. So there is still a good chance that we will be doing a fireworks display and whether or not, depending on what stage we're at at that point, we'll have to decide as we get closer to whether or not we will allow people to social distance with their individual families in Spencer Park to watch the fireworks. We haven't yet, uh, we'll have to wait till we're closer to see if that's even a possibility or if people would have to view it from their homes or cars or something more restrictive. That's kind of what I've got going on right now. Do you guys have any questions? Um, Joseph, this is Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, reference to the my colleagues there in the past, the, last year that helped with the flags up there, Wednesday, uh, we'll be putting them up those those flags that you're talking about. And then it probably might need some added help to take them down because I think uh, one of the individuals is going to be on vacation, hopefully. And okay. so um, maybe Dale. Anyone in the public that would like are. to come help? <laughs> <laughs> Time are we talking, Bruce? Uh. We're going to go up and put them up Wednesday at four. And then as far as taking them down, I think uh, 
the boss lady there would know better than me. She would set the time and um, we'd bring them down. Yeah, usually we take them down a week after, so Wednesday, that same a week after. Just because that, Monday be a lot of the flowers come down and, or go in, and so we always let them kind of stay up in case there's some stragglers. Yeah. That would be the one that really – that would be the one that really might need some help on. Um, yeah. Because, like I say, one of the guys is going to be on vacation, hopefully. He better be. Um, anyhow, uh, if you want to come up Wednesday, too, I'll, the more the merrier. Um, that, that's so, at 4 o'clock, Bruce? Yeah, Wednesday at 4 o'clock we're going to do that. It's only like uh, – correct me if I'm wrong, Joe said it's 14 flags. Yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah, so it's not a great number. It's just uh, yeah. putting the poles back and and sure. uh, folding the flags and doing the proper things with them. So yeah, and if they end I, up getting wet, we'll probably just stage them to dry inside the green shed when we take them down. Okay, okay, sounds good. Anyhow, that's what I had to add to that. Thank you, Bruce. You bet. Josette, I have two questions. Are, sure. are we going to meet in chamber on the 1st of June or not yet? Well, so the only kind of critical thing that to follow the orders, planning that the orders are still in place or whatever happens with that, um, I don't know how you guys are going to be six feet apart. You will not be six feet apart. So there's a there's either we everyone wears masks, which would be impossible to really hear you potentially, or um, maybe we I don't know if anyone has any ideas. It's not really a problem to have staff six feet apart or the public every other seat or every other two seats. Um, but the real tricky part is that dais is not long enough for you to really be six feet apart wide. Can I comment? Yes, go ahead, Stephanie. Um, I also need to look at the governor's executive order allowing and kind of making um, public bodies have meetings allowing the public to call in. Without me being at my desktop, I'm not sure how I can enable that service at this time. So I need to do some looking into that as well. Okay. And my other question, Josette, I got an email from League of Oregon Cities today, and I'm, I think you got it also. I'm just asking if you did. It was about the uh, Court of Art Coronavirus Relief Fund reimbursement information um, from the CRF. That's $1.6 billion in coronavirus relief fund. Uh, I did, through the did CARES get that. Act. Did, you, did you get that email? We did. And so we're going to be okay. looking at the forms and seeing if there's anything we can get recouped for, reimbursed for. Right. I, I, I'm, I just wanted to remind you of that because the deadline's uh, this Friday, the 22nd. But so. Yes. Uh, you know more about it, what you might be eligible for. So I just wanted to remind you of that. So that's okay, all I thanks. have. Yeah. Mayor Hobart, I'd like to ask the administrator three questions. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Joe said this, Councilor Allen. Uh, my first question was, I want to clarify, are we blocking off the ramps with plywood? Yeah, so in my, uh, that's what you guys, that's what I'm proposing, that we would just block, fully block it with signage using plywood crossing the ramp there, yes. Okay, and following up with Councillor Wagner's concerns about our park hosts doing all the heavy lifting as far as cleaning the restrooms, are we going to have staff help, yes or no? Yes. Okay, and my third Thing. It's not really a question. It's more of a 
Well, it's a question of maybe. Can we have council at the scout cabin set up tables, plenty of rooms spread apart? I would think you can. We've held budget meetings there. It would just be uh, necessary to post it and then double check with the the seniors that we that those days and times are available to us. I don't know how my other fellow counselors feel, but I would be more than willing to do that if available. This is Councilor Wagner. I, I think it's a Britain's idea. I, I'm fully I fully behind that, Councilor um, Allen. I the opportunity to see the, my uh, fellow councilmen and and speak to them face to face is uh, something that's been sorely missing. It's Councilor Webb. Um, Go ahead, Dale. Yeah, to that point, another another idea we could do is uh, three people up on the diocese and three people in the front row of the in the audience there, and then and then the space behind us. So we could we could get us all there in chambers. But that's just that's just another idea. But yeah, I definitely back to ours idea if it, uh, keeping us in chambers doesn't work. That's something we can sure look ahead to in the next week or so. So council wants staff to try and make that happen for the June 1st meeting? I would appreciate it. And then the, uh, we'd have some chairs in the back for, for people to come and, you know, go to the council meeting from the public would be nice. Yeah. So can I get con a consensus on that or? You have my, con this is Councillor McNair, you have my consensus as long as it uh, meets uh, the requirements of our staff as uh, our city recorder stated her issue that uh, um, I would, you know, before we do that, she needs to be able to make sure that's legal. Council Wagner. Webb. Okay, Council Wagner. Um, yes, sorry, the dog spoke for me, but yes. <laughs> and Mayor Hobart. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so we'll look into that and see how we could get it recorded or do kind of what we're doing now where the public could call in and listen to you guys. Um, we'll see if we have the equipment and means to do that. Because I think why Stephanie's concerned about it is we really can only have 25 people in there. So if we had more people interested than could be in the building, we need to have an avenue for them to be able to hear it. So that's what she's talking about. Because there's not a lot going on. They might want to come to your council meeting. This is Councilor Wagner again. Just a, head, um, a point of information. We had a school board meeting Thursday night and had th at 1.31 attendees, which is pretty remarkable. and Almost everyone stayed through the entire meeting um, because they were able to just call in and listen. Yeah, so I think that as long as we can figure that aspect out, whether it's via one of our phones becomes that or something, then we'll we'll try and make that happen. This this is Councillor McNair. I'd like a, a question for Councillor Wagner. Go ahead. Um, did you guys meet in person, Susan, or was that a, a same as what we're doing here? We actually used a Google, uh, a Google Meet as the uh, method of calling in. Some people were on visual, some people were not. They were just they just called in, um, but it was incredibly um, successful, and many of them commented that they really appreciated the opportunity to be able to attend the meeting, listen to the meeting, not have to be there in person, um, but that they would definitely do it in the future as well. So so you did you you, you didn't meet the the 
uh, the school board did not actually meet in, in person uh, at, up at the school or wherever you hold your, hold your meetings. Correct. Okay. All right. That's, thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions for the city administrator? Do you have anybody, any counselors have anything to add? I would add one thing. This is Councilor McNair again. I would add one thing to, to uh, as information to the public if they're listening or it gets out, uh, I, I, that we are going to revisit this issue of the docks in, in a fairly short period of time. So um, patience, um, we'll see how things go. This is Councilor Webb. Go ahead, Dale. Um, I kind of wanted to get the other counselors' feelings too. Uh, being that we're uh, telecommuting here is, you know, been a little more awkward, and it's more awkward for staff. And if we are going to start meeting where we're together, uh, is there an expectation we're going to start picking up a little more workload here? Uh, been pretty light in these meetings. Is there specific things you like? You think we're holding back work, or? Um, well, you know, we were working on uh, urban growth, uh, that whole issue, the, the sure. water, uh, you know, ordinance or whatever we were going to do there, and and uh, it just seemed like before we had we had a lot on our docket there for a while. And it's been here and you know it's understandable trying to take some of those issues on without being face to face or having the public being able to have more involvement. But if we're going to get back into a form uh, that's more comfortable, I'd kind of like to see a little more coming at us. No, definitely. We can add those, get that list going again once we're in person. Yeah. So this is Councilman McNair, uh, Mayor. Just to add yeah, on to that, um, where are we at on our workshops? Is that off the table still, or, or uh, if we start doing this, will we be able to uh, begin to pick that back up? Yes. So, and we do have pending issues there on our workshops, right? Yeah, so I think you guys, Staff was going to bring to you what you have so far as far as your council rules and adopt that because the roll call is, call is part of that. You'll still have work to do because you aren't fully through those, but at least get written down what you've agreed to up to this point in that. So, yeah, those kind of issues need to come back to you guys for workshops. And Stephanie has your list of uh, what you were working on. We just pick up again. If you guys are interested in, you know, this next meeting where you're in person, we could bring that list and you could schedule one of those or two of them, whatever your availability is. So with that, with that, I would uh, wonder how we would be going on our committees. Um, is that completely out of the question or is that something that we could maybe be looking forward to in the next phase? Yeah, so the tricky part is the the committees are held here, and until phase two, most municipal buildings are right. not opening. Um, so once we're in phase two, I think that once the public's allowed back in here, then we would re-up all of our committee meetings on their normal dates with social distancing and making sure we were prepared for with hand sanitizer and wiping stuff down after everyone's there and everything. And, and just to just to clarify for me, because I, my workload's been pretty heavy lately. Uh, when's phase two? They're talking about initiating that. Is that mid June? They're talking about the first week of June, depending on the numbers. Okay. So it's like the fourth so, or fifth. 
So we're not too far out from this that uh, we're going to get back from to the potential somewhat now, right. a, a semblance of nor normal business. So um, that's good to hear. I'm yeah. encouraged. Phase, phase one, Bruce, is 21 days from the 15th. Okay. Okay. So we'll have our council meeting on the 1st, and, and then shortly after that, uh, hopefully we'll uh, transition to phase two. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Josette. Sure. Just a recommendation, maybe, Josette, and maybe you could list some of the thing, unfinished business in, in unfinished business um, on the uh, May or June 1st agenda, possibly, and we could at least address those or, or pick a date to address those so we don't forget. Yeah, we can list kind of the categories. Some of them are going to be dependent on and why I'm a little hesitant to have you guys schedule them out is I, I need to get with Matt to see if there's anything he needs to bring forward with the UGB stuff. So we'll kind of give you a list of what your workshops outstanding were and then what the current projects were and when we can get bring those to you next. Very good. Good. Okay. Hey, Joseph, this is JR. Uh, our next meeting, will you have an update pertaining to uh, some legal issues we've been talking about? I'm hoping so. I, I, I'm i hoping so. I, if if I have anything, we you would go into executive session at that next meeting. So I'm hoping to get an answer of whether or not to schedule that um, by the Wednesday. Okay, great. Do it in Thank your packet. you. Okay, that's all you have, Josette? Yeah, I have a kind of rough action item list if you want me to do that. Sure. Okay, so I have that um, staff tomorrow is going to secure the docks with plywood and signage, prepare the restrooms for opening, remove the no fishing signs, outfit the park host with supplies, increase uh, police drive by and presence as available during the heavy uh, usage times, and then work up some signage for risk exposure, um, kind of putting the onerous on the patrons that are going to be um, coming to the lake. And then we will be posting on the website that the lake will be open for fishing, excluding the docks, Wednesday, a half an hour before dawn. In for the June 1st meeting, we're preparing and looking into whether or not we can hold the council meeting at the scout cabin with social distancing and allowing for the public to access it via the phone. And June 1st, we're going to ha have an item on the agenda for you guys to um, have a doc discussion on what phase you'll want <coughs> to bring docs back into open. And we're also going to bring you your current workshop list and the current items on your agenda and the availability of talking about those items in the future meetings. This is Councillor Wagner. Um, can we also make sure that whatever disclaimers, and you probably already thought of this, but um, that we put it on the front page of the website as well? Yeah, so that signage for risk exposure will go along with any posts of openings. Perfect, thank you. Yep. Did I miss anything? Joseph, when you get a chance to talk to Susie down there, would you let her know? I think she's doing a great job, and and, I, and I'd like you know just extend my thanks. I know she's doing a tough tough situation down there, and I think she's doing a great job. I will let her know that. Could, could you, this is Councillor McNair, could you do that on behalf of the whole council? Sure. Thank you. Joseph, I would have said that, but I didn't, I didn't want to speak for everybody. So. I, I understand. Bruce Council. will. <laughs> this Councillor will. Yeah, Rick. Oh, go ahead. Uh, one thing, one thing uh, Susie mentioned to me, uh, 
it might make her job a little easier. I don't know how much they cost. What a machine to take a credit card uh, for yeah, her. Yeah, we're use. already we are. That's already in the budget for July oh, okay. one. We talked to you guys about oh, it, awesome. the changing out the mechanism there, and then I'm also working on um, a few more signs that let people know that it's a pay to park area. So I'm working oh, with Susie okay. on that stuff. Yeah. Good. Good. Councillor Webb. Councillor Webb, go ahead. So, would it be appropriate for us, um, you know, get her like a camp post hat or a vest or something that gives her some a little more recognition for for the public to recognize who she is? Because I think that's kind of awkward at times when she's approaching people and. She's not really identified till she says who she is, and then how do they know for sure? Should we do something um, like we that? We could look in. We could look into getting her something similar to the Public Works has with the seal on it and some maybe a park house label up above the lapel or something. Yeah, it's something almost like something. For Alan. Joe said, "Don't the." Uh, park hosts in the county and state they have like a little red vest and it's pretty easy to identify who the park host is i i don't know i mean i can look into it but we can get her something to that that designates and probably it'd be good for us to have that for all park hosts when they're kind of doing their rounds or going to collect fees or money it'd probably be a good thing identif here, here. identifying them yeah, maybe has a city logo on i think it's a great idea thank you yeah. Yeah, we'll look into that. I, I'm kind of surprised we haven't prior to this. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's some good ideas thrown out tonight. Yeah. 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 We, we we don't want Susie scaring people when she runs up on them. You know, looking for that parking yeah. pass also. <laughs> <laughs> This is Councilor hey, McNair. Uh, go ahead, can, Bruce. Mayor, can I, can I yeah, say something? Yeah. Um, on the chance that I'm going to be the bad guy here, I would like to ask my fellow councilmen that, and I'm, I'm not trying to cast aspersions here, but when you speak to these these park hosts, or they come to you with concerns that uh, uh, we keep in mind that uh, our city administrator has a job to do, and, and uh, one of the things that probably should be reminded right out the bat is ask this concern should be taken to her first. Um, I, I I know you probably all do that. I'm probably being a jerk by reminding you, but uh, I just think that it's uh, the appropriate thing to be done. Councilor McNair and, and fellow councilors as well. That was what I thought that we were going to be trying to address this evening. And Bruce, I thank you for bringing that up um, because we do have a protocol of how we should be doing this and who should and who should not be uh, putting themselves, not just forward speaking with the city, but also putting themselves at risk. So um, thank you for bringing that up. Well, I think I think that it, it it does harm to if you've been in positions of uh, admin, uh, managing people that uh, it makes it difficult when your boss or somebody above you steps in and and starts talking, you know, and or they come to you, you know. There's a reason why there's a hierarchy in the military. You don't go over people's heads. Um, and usually when somebody does, if that individual that they go to, they'll usually pretty quickly tell you, you need to go back and talk to your, um, your immediate supervisor. And so anyhow, I, if, if I've, if, I don't mean to offend anybody, I just, uh, I'm sure everybody here is aware of it. You guys are all doing a good job. This is Councillor Webb. That's pretty much my SOP. So if she has something of great concern, it's uh, 
approach staff with it. So. I, I, I trust I'd like you. To and add I... on to this. this is Jr. I'd like to add on to that. Joe said uh, we un we we understand that uh, things have been hard to get a hold of at City Hall, but do the camp hosts have your cell phone numbers uh, they can call direct when there's somebody like threatening around them and yeah. do they call have to call city hall and get a message and wait no they susie has my my cell phone number she texted me like three times yesterday so okay. they can well, all then, get a hold of me same with dory okay then that's then that's non issue then uh as far yeah. as getting a hold of the proper person then thank you yeah. Hey, Bruce, could you text me your phone number? I don't have it anymore. You, you bet, Mayor. I uh, got a new phone. Um, I've, okay. uh, if anybody I'll wants it, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you right now. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't care who calls me. Um, it's 503. Five three zero zero nine three two. It's public record now, buddy. Yeah, I don't <laughs> care. And and, you know, and, and if you'll call calling. if you'll call if you'll call me mayor or, or one of the councilmen, then I can put your name back in my directory. Which you probably won't okay. do now. <laughs> On the off chance that might happen. Oh. Okay, thanks, Bruce. You bet, Mayor. Okay. If there's none other business with the but city administrator. One thing, Mayor. Okay, go ahead. This is Councillor Allen. I'd just like to thank uh uh everybody from the public that's called in, even though I don't know who you are. Appreciate it. You're here. That was it. Thank you, JR. Okay, I believe we come to the end of our agenda. And so I will close this meeting at 8.35 p.m. Meeting adjourned.